It's the most crazy disinformation campaign I've, I've ever yes. seen. Yes. Hey guys, Kim Java here. Now this is something I have been wanting to talk about again for a while because it is not just consumer reports. It's pretty much all mainstream media. At least it seems that way that they all hate Tesla. And based on the constant barrage that we see of negative headlines from short sellers and all the FUD that's out there, they say they won't last. Demand is weaning. Subsidies are keeping them alive. Elon is a snake oil salesman. I mean, we have heard it on and on and on. It's the car on autopilot using advanced technology. A big feature of the Tesla vehicle in question catching fire and seemingly out of nowhere. Deadly crash involving a self-driving car. Tesla has no advantage, no technological advantage, no software advantage, no battery advantage. I will be the first to admit that Tesla has dramatically grown over the past two years, and naturally that has led to exponential growth in its fan base as well. And with all that said, comes this sort of cult-like behavior um, with some of the people in the Tesla space. And I've even made a video about that, which got a lot of attention. Guy talks about liking non-Tesla. Guy gets schooled on why Tesla is better. Owner has a question, comment, concern with Tesla. Tesla fans disgrace owner publicly. Girl orders Ford Mach-E over Model Y. Tesla fans bash her for buying the wrong car. And if any other car makers make an EV, Tesla fans bash them too. And a lot of you guys actually had plenty to say about it. Some of it can be justified by the fact that Tesla has been attacked for so long and its fan base is just kind of naturally on the defense. So the title of this video calls out consumer reports since they are the most recent in the line of Tesla haters. And I don't know if you guys all caught this, but in their latest publication, consumer reports actually attacked Tesla's rollout of the full self-driving software, which if you don't know already, Tesla has pretty much gamified it for its owners on the app. So basically your daily driving behavior actually gives you a safety score now and tells Tesla who is the safest drivers and it will give you FSD or full self-driving beta based on how safe of a driver you are. So consumer reports argue that Tesla's safety scores could actually make the road less safe for all of us by incentivizing drivers to cheat the system to gain a higher rating. So for example, they said that their Model Y would constantly get dinged on its safety scores for hard braking, but as soon as they started coasting through intersections or failing to come to a complete stop, they were able to get a higher safety score. So they also said that gamification has a dark side to it, which has been proven by some researchers over at Ohio State University. So when teachers at that school added gamification to the classroom, the students ended up being more likely to cheat to win rewards. So some of you guys have actually said to me on Instagram that your safety score is just a percentage of your drive. So in this case, heartbreaking, you could in theory just go drive around a parking lot and gently brake to dilute the overall bad breaking data and others have actually reached out to me saying that there's even a way to hack the system to improve your safety score if you find yourself triggering the car's sensors during a drive you could just reboot the center screen with the scroll wheels um, and then put the car into park afterwards and then all that data will not be saved into your driving history now personally I think that there is always going to be a way to cheat anything that you want bad enough in life and I think it's just sort of part of human nature so I'm not going to say who is wrong or who is right in this video but I will say that Elon himself has said that the system is still in beta calculation and safety scores should evolve over time to accurately predict reports and its bias um, it is not really just consumer reports but they kind of will put out this information and the media will take it and they'll write all of these articles about it so if we go back to 2018 of the Model 3 they said not recommended due to braking issues in 2019 model 3 not recommended due to reliability paint trim and electronic issues i know you guys remember some of this stuff in 2020 we had model y reliability much worse than average also 2020 model x worst electric car you should never buy with a reliability score of one out of five and in 2021 there was that tesla will drive with no driver and driver's seat that they featured at this point i was able to get myself completely out of the driver's seat with the seat belt still plugged in and autopilot still stayed engaged in the passenger seat 
I was able to increase the set speed by turning the wheel on the steering wheel. And at this point, it was completely driving on autopilot with no one in the driver's seat. Also in 2021, they had Tesla privacy concerns regarding interior front facing camera. Then once more a few weeks ago, there was the Model S yoke provides no benefit and safety pitfalls. Lastly, we had Tesla safety score, not so safe. Again, some of these reports and headlines can be justified and some seem kind of overreaching. To be fair, back in 2015, Consumer Reports highlighted that the Model S P85D was so good that it shattered its rating scales. So some do argue that on the surface, Consumer Reports seems to be fair and influence free. And that is actually branded right at the top of their homepage. But when you dig a little bit deeper, you see that they are far from being solely supported by subscriptions and there may be some influence since they're largely funded by donations as well. And you might be surprised to see who is at the top of their list. So we actually did a quick Google search to find out who are the biggest companies that donate to Consumer Reports and we turned up this little gem for you guys. Ford has constantly been at the top of the highest tier of donors to Consumer Reports over the years. So looking back at the data at 2020, they've donated a base of over $100,000 to Consumer Reports. And there are also other companies on the list who do choose to remain anonymous. So I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Consumer Reports also has a TV program called Consumer 101, which they air on their partner NBC's network. And they recently aired a segment all about EVs and they featured three of them. And of course, none of those were a Tesla. So people just use these kind of examples to fuel more speculation that if Tesla was to donate to Consumer Reports, maybe they would then be perceived more favorably. Some Tesla vehicles catching fire and sometimes it's after a crash, but sometimes it's seemingly out of nowhere. Now Tesla is facing a potential lawsuit and federal investigators have questions for the car company. But when it comes to mainstream media, the perception of a negative bias towards Tesla or just the broader EV space is far easier to prove and the data even supports it. Check out this fascinating analysis done by Clean Technica a few years back that actually tracked the word Tesla in headlines and stories by all of the popular TV and online mainstream media. And it showed how much negativity there was around stories covering Teslas. The data set looked at news mentions from early September to early November. The red indicates negative news yellow being neutral and blue being positive. They found that the negative bias towards Tesla's was at times as high as 75% of all articles published. Overall, coming out to about 44 negative headlines about Tesla's, 49 neutral, and about 29 positive ones. Financial outlets like CNBC, Bloomberg, and Business Insider published the highest Tesla related content in the time period in question. So almost all of these stories fell under three categories. Tesla crashes, generally blamed on autopilot, Tesla fires, generally blamed on batteries, and Tesla stock prices, generally blamed on, of course, Elon Musk for overhyping and overpromising. Even though there is data that shows that you are six times less likely to crash on autopilot than otherwise, or 11 times less likely to be involved in a Tesla related fire versus a gas car fire under the same miles driven. Some of these things are just incredibly crazy. Um, you know, it's at least 10 times more likely for a gasoline car or a combustion engine car it's in the name. <laughs> I mean, come on. It has highly flammable fluid. It's designed to burn. I mean, would you rather have like a gasoline-powered cell phone or a battery-powered cell phone? I mean, it was like a no-brainer, you know? I mean, even Elon has acknowledged the media's negative bias towards Tesla many times over, and he goes as far as saying the problem is journos are under constant pressure to get max clicks and earn advertising dollars or get fired. It's kind of a tricky situation as Tesla doesn't advertise, but fossil fuel companies and gas diesel car companies are among the world's biggest advertisers. So this is where the evidence becomes even more clear. So when it comes to local news markets, the largest advertisers, as we know, are car dealerships. They'll usually take a Ford or a Jeep commercial from the manufacturer and just slap it 
it on with it available at Phil's Automark just off exit 23 at the end of it and it is big money sometimes six figures for large local TV stations do you know what is even bigger money national accounts on TV ads at the largest networks those can reach seven figures depending on programming car advertising are some of the largest accounts a media brand can have GM spends about three billion dollars a year Berkshire Geico spends about 2.5 billion and Ford roughly 2.3 billion and Fiat Chrysler about 2 billion Billions more are spent on advertising by all auto insurance companies as well. And Tesla famously spends zero dollars, nothing. <laughs> so I wanna hit this hard because if the extreme bull case is correct, then major programs on all network TV shows such as the Today Show on NBC, GMA on ABC, CBS This Morning, etc., will all lose significant amounts of money and sometimes even their entire shows. If Ford, GM, Fiat Chrysler all die slowly, so will their advertising dollars. Not to mention the cascading effect. Ice vehicle advertisements on the late night shows, on live sports, etc. Tesla's success without spending a dime on advertising is definitely getting the attention of TV executives as well. So Tesla in a lot of ways represents a slow end to potentially so many industries. Automotive, big oil, AI, the insurance, just to name a few of them. And those can easily cascade into the media world where they spend billions on advertising. And in some ways they're being replaced with a company that spends zero. Again, this is a bull case scenario if everything goes as Tesla and its supporters hope over the coming years. But given Tesla's recent success, popularity among owners and its exponential growth, there is no reason to think that things are going to be slowing down. So there's a lot to think about here and this kind of gives you the perspective of maybe why Tesla seems to always have a target on its back. Of course, Elon's personality, even though it's sometimes endearing or relatable, can also help fuel some of this. And he's so bold with his predictions and his goals about other planets, robotics, and self-driving as well. So I am curious about what your guys' take is on all of this, and I hope that you will share your ideas with me in the comments below. And if you get a minute and you enjoy the shirt that I am wearing, then you can go to our website, it's kimjava.com, and take a look at some of our Tesla-inspired gear on there. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching this video. The biggest thank you that we can get is for you guys to be subscribed to this channel, like this video, and hit the bell for notifications. And thank you guys so much, and we will see you next time.